My name is Zach Johnson. I'm a casting director with Bean and Murray Productions, and right now we're doing Bad Girls Club season 11. Okay. So when casting, um, how should the ladies come dressed? Well, I, I mean, I want everybody to dress how they would dress, mm -hmm. you know? So you, the, the problem is when people pre pretend to be something they're not, or, you know, it's out of character for them, but obviously you're coming to do it. Not a job interview, but a TV interview, almost an audition. So you want to look good, you know. No workout clothes, no just rolling out of the gym. <laughs> right. and here. I mean, uh, you know, millions of people watch the show, so right. that too. But as long as you're yourself and you're comfortable, that's what's most important. You know what I mean? Most definitely. Um, when coming to a casting call, should you come alone or should you bring like, you know, your friends? It do it doesn't matter. It, right. You know, if you come alone. That means that you really want to do the show. You didn't need moral support. You know, that means you're confident. But that's not a, a strike against you if you bring a friend at all, too. Right, you know? right. Okay, I understand. Um, during a casting process, have you ever found someone that just totally reminded you of a girl from last season and you're like, no? <laughs> or they were just trying to? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't specifically say that there was one person who did that, but yes, people have that's another problem is when people watch the show and I say that in a lot of interviews it's like you don't have to be what you've seen before because obviously we're trying to do a new season and a new show so yeah no need to recycle through people exactly. <laughs> um, when casting and then once the girls are finally picked what are seven personalities that you're looking for okay so once once they've been finally selected yeah, once you've for the been show. finally selected like do you guys split them up into seven different categories do you want like bossy nice you know it's it's different in the aspect we're not we don't have a chart that you have to fill each separate personality. Right. But if you were to ask me what are seven seven different personalities that would be interesting for a television show. Right. I would say that there's the you know the funny, mm -hmm. the funny one is big. Right. Yeah, sassy. Um, <laughs> argumentative. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Mean. Mean. Evil. There you go. Um, nice. Motherly. Motherly, or um, you know, like you always have that friend who is somebody you can go to, like a shoulder yes. to lean on, someone who gives advice, the the doctor Phil of the group, eat right, something like that. <laughs> so that's always a good personality to have in a TV right. show when you when you have seven people in a house. Mm -hmm. Would be something that's good. Um, high energy is always good. People who are bubblies, people who are charismatic, people who are expressive, use their hands when they talk, so passionate. Right. That's good. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Okay, okay. Um, I've heard this before. I don't know if it's true. Have you ever had anyone try out for a real, real world and then you send them over to Bad Girls Club because you think they're better suited for that? There, That's definitely happened. That's where, definitely mm -hmm. happened. Where someone might have come out for a show, the mm -hmm. real world or whatever. Let's say someone comes out for a TV show and it just didn't work out. Right. But you know, you're a cast director who works on another show and you're like, you know what? It didn't work out for the real world or it didn't work out for Top Chef or it didn't work out for whatever. Right. But we think you'd be good for Bad Girls Club. Would you be interested? Bam. Happens, all, happens a lot. Oh wow, okay. Have you ever casted a girl and regretted it? Or do you know of someone that has ever happened? Wow. Maybe that's, someone uh, like, that's not the girl I met a month ago. I see how you do it. You throw me a couple softballs and then, uh, <laughs> and then at the end you come I in, don't have to say anything. Yeah, you're trying to catch me up. Um, <laughs> is there anything that I regret? Well, the good thing is, is that I'm not the, the last voice. Never, I mean, when you're dealing right. with network and production companies. So it's not like I would lose my job if I put, if I recommended somebody that other people signed off on, they go on the show and they end up being a disaster right wouldn't be the end of the world because it's not just me they got to get through right but, but there's there's definitely been people that from what I gauged from the initial interview and then how they were on the show I didn't see that coming that's definitely happened oh. I would name specific names but definitely have seen something where you're like well my well, that's not the person that I knew right. and where the hell did that come from you know <laughs> so that happens all the time but of course you don't when you throw somebody in a house or when you throw somebody in a different environment, there's cameras on them, you know, sometimes it's a it's a game changer. It changes things a little bit. Definitely, I would agree 100%. Um, recently, I think it was in Houston, Texas, not too long ago, fighting has gone on at casting calls. Have you ever witnessed that or know of someone? Have you ever noticed someone, know someone that's witnessed it? Excuse me. 
I think the problem is, is that when you watch a television show mm -hmm. and then you go out and audition for that show, and if you see something on a show that is fighting, okay? Mm -hmm. And then people make the decision that, okay, so they're looking for fighters because that's what we see on the show. Right. Not taking into account why it got to that point on the show right. and putting themselves in that situation and then doing it. Um, I have not seen a fight break out of a casting call yet. Um, I've heard of fights. I've been I've been to a casting call where there were fights and didn't see it and stuff had to be stopped down. Mm -hmm. But again, I wouldn't really, you know, if you, like I said, you see something, you, they think that that's what we want to see. So they're just trying to be smart and trying to trying to do something that they think it's going to actually help them. But it really, right. it doesn't help. Make them stand out to you guys. Fight, fighting's not a, a great thing at a casting call. Okay. You know? Okay. Um, on the topic of fighting, what do you think about the fighting on the show? Because you know there's a lot of backlash. There's, um, it's, you got to put yourself in that situation. You got to see what it's like to be in a house where there's a lot of cameras on you. And have you ever lived with anybody? Ugh, I'm living with three right now. And we just had a problem people. this morning. Right. You could be best friends with somebody. Right. And two years into it, a year into it, six months into it, mm -hmm. stuff happens. Right. right? Because you, you're so familiar and the smallest thing will set you off. Exactly. So I think it's amplified when you have 20 cameras on you. And there's right. a lot at stake. Everything you're doing is recorded. Everything is taped. And tempers, tempers flare. Um, definitely don't go looking for fighters. It's not. It's not what we're looking to do. Right. You know what we're looking for on this show, especially, is is a reason to be in the bad girl's house. Something that they want to fix about themselves. Some some way they want to gain an experience. You asked earlier what different kind of personalities. You definitely wouldn't want seven girls all from the same sorority. Right. You definitely want want seven girls from the same neighborhood, best friends, or share similar characteristics. Right. When you do something like that, you get entertaining results because it's a melting pot, different cultures, different diversities, and that's not just ethnic, that's every kind of diversity you can think of, religious, socioeconomic, um, geographical, any kind of diversity. And when you get that, you're gonna have people who clash, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it's a good thing when you mix it up a little bit like that. And I think it's a good thing for people to go on the show and learn something about themselves and it's a good thing for them to try and change something. If you have trust issues and you don't have a lot of girlfriends and you and for whatever reason, you know, the girls that you grew up with burned you or whatever it is and, and you have this in your head that you can't get along with anybody so you only hang out with a couple guys and then maybe you go on the show and you spend three and a half months with some girls and you develop some real bonding friendships. You learn something about yourself. You learn what it how to handle being around people mm -hmm. who disagree with you. Right. Um, and there's a way you can change from that, and then that's a good thing at the end of the day. Right. Now, um, someone from a few seasons back and who is currently hosting stuff right now, Tanisha, mm -hmm. she specifically said that um, the purpose of the show has been slightly misconstrued. Do you agree? She said the show has been misconstrued, the purpose yeah. of the show. The purpose of the show has been misconstrued through viewers and a couple people who have decided to go on the show and twist it. Yes, I would agree with that. I would say that, again, it's like, you know, when, when people break out in fights and cast calls just because they think that's what we want to see. Mm -hmm. Now, not every fight happens because of that. Right. You know, people get in fights all the time, and that happens. But the purpose of the show is for these girls to change, to grow, to learn something from this experience. And if she's, and I haven't read the whole context of what she said, mm -hmm. but it sounds like possibly she's alluding to what I'm saying, which is you go on this show to change, to benefit, to learn something from being with people from all over, from different diversities. And um, just, I don't think a lot of people take that away from watching the show right now. And so in that case, she's dead on. Do you have a memorable interview? Something that you'll probably never forget. I have many memorable <laughs> Can you give me one or two? Um, wow. So many memorable interviews. Now, are you talking for this show? Are you talking for any show? You know, I wanted to stick around Bad Girls Club, but you know, if there's something better, go ahead and say it. Well, I had somebody show up in a, in a Bad Girls interview. Who brought a knife. Okay. Um, not that they, <laughs> not that they were trying, not that they were trying to to do anything with it. Right. But it was more of a metaphor. Okay. For um, 
how if, if you get crossed, you're gonna catch a different side. Not saying that this, she wasn't saying that she's ever stabbed anybody, she wouldn't say anything like that, but right. to brandish a weapon in an interview room, <laughs> to swing it around, <laughs> to accentuate your point, can get people to jump up out of their chair. So that was a little disconcerting. However, wow. her intentions were pure. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. wow, 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 okay. <clears throat> When asked, um, I'm guess I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you guys say this. If not, correct me. When asked what makes you a bad girl, uh, what what are the answers you're looking for? It's it's almost like when you take out a girl on a date, right? Mm -hmm. You don't you don't say to yourself, I hope she says that she's from mm -hmm. a good family. I hope that she says that she likes uh, the movie <laughs> JFK. Right. I hope that she thinks Kevin. Kyle. You don't you don't have a set thing or anything, but you do hope that it's different and something you haven't heard before and original and authentic. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, what makes you a bad girl is I get what I want when I want, nobody's gonna cross me or they're gonna get, they're gonna get beat down. <laughs> that's been done before and that's kind of cliche. Right. What makes you a bad girl is actually a good thing because you're out there and you're independent mm -hmm. and you worked for your money mm -hmm. and you don't rely on other people right. to, to get stuff done. Then that's kind of cool. So you, there can't be a right or wrong answer in this stuff because then it's not even casting. Then you'll never get anything new. You're just looking for some an answer you've never heard or something that makes, so, something that comes from a real place, something that's authentic mm -hmm. and something that's original and different. It's awesome. Uh, like do's and don'ts. Something that you see automatically when they walk in. So when you're sitting down talking to them, like that's a no, that's a no, that's a yes, that's a yes. A no would be disrespecting somebody else, mm -hmm. but trying to make yourself feel better by belittling somebody else, mm -hmm. who also showed the courage to stand up at a casting call. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that does happen on any show. People will, people like to do that when you're doing a group interview. That's a big, that's a big no. A big, a big yes would be to be yourself, to be real, to have specific stories, not to be general, mm -hmm. not to speak in cliches, but it's more beneficial to say, to tell somebody what you did last night or what's going on in your life, or what this crazy roommate you had did, or, or a, a great date story you had, or a bad date story you had, something funny, mm -hmm. something that shows your personality, as opposed to something that you think is just enticing because it's clever, would be a no. So being yourself is a do, being what you think, trying to pretend to be uh, what you think people want to hear, mm -hmm. that's a no. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. Actually, I just pulled this one off the top of my head. Have you guys, or have you ever heard of, you know, people maybe higher up or whatever, um, are they having problems with, like, websites um, pulling information from new seasons that haven't even aired yet that are currently filming? Do you guys have a problem with that? And, like, replacements being named and... It's spoilers, excuse gotcha. me. Gotcha. Thank you, exactly, spoilers. Um, have you guys had like problems about that, or have you heard talks like, you know, we gotta try and keep it locked up and tight, like stop giving away info? And... Well, yeah, and uh, in, in reality television, probably all television that I've been familiar with, is that giving away the outcome of the show is a huge thing that you don't want to happen. You, that's why there's confidentialities. That's why there's non-disclosures. So, so the whole episode isn't ruined before people watch it. You know. Um, and I'm sure it's happened. I'm, I deal with the actual interviewing and, and submitting to my bosses and writing up stuff and traveling and, and trying to connect with people and get them to open up to me so I can get a good interview out of them. Mm -hmm. So I don't really deal with that stuff, but I'm sure it's happened. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know it's happened. I know it's happened. I've seen yeah. it firsthand. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? I think that's it for today. And All I right. want to thank you very thank, much. Thank you for your time, man. I really yeah. appreciate it. No. Do you have any uh, personal favorites, or do you even? I know you interview. Do you even watch the show like that? Yeah, um, I love Tanisha. Tanisha's the bottom. Of the Pots and pans, brother. I'm gonna get the f sleep cause of y'all. Y'all not gonna get a sleep.